welcome to Ghosts and Grit. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the podcast. We are joined this episode by Katie Sackhoff. She's an actress. You know her from Longmare. You know her from Mandalorian, uh, Battlestar Galactica. She was Starbuck. Um, yeah, it's an awesome conversation. I've known Katie for a number of years. We talk about parenthood. We talk about her career. We talk about ghosts. So I uh, hope you enjoy the episode and please make sure you click like and subscribe. And if you're watching on Rumble, make sure you hit a follow. Do you spend a lot of time on YouTube? Uh, I do, but I don't get too too gnarly on it because okay. you can okay. go down like a weird. You can. Yeah. You can. And then it just starts spitting that at you constantly. Yeah. Invariably, yeah. I've just I, my my YouTube uh, feed is just a lot of jujitsu stuff now. Yeah, that's just, and I, and that that's safe with the odd like UFO or anything like that. I cleaned mine up with Miss Rachel. Okay, that's, it's just all Miss Rachel yeah, now. Miss Rachel, she oh. started she started following my sister back on social media, <gasps> and it was a big deal. It was Stop. like Stop. Yeah, that would, would like make me really if Miss Rachel or the Beat Buds. Yeah, if either one. Oh, do you know? I know the Beat Buds. Do you really? Yeah, that's my friend. It's my friend's husband. Stop. He's the drama. We went to their first. Uh, that was our daughter's first concert. Okay. We took them like she loves spooky monkey okay we took her to the concert she had so much fun yeah and yeah like we're 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 deep okay we're well deep that's in. good that's but, yeah. you know I, I love a bit i mean miss rachel i will credit to she basically taught my daughter to speak at yeah. like six months ours too yeah i mean not six months where she was like at nine months yeah like it, Mel, got it. It all rolls together. Yeah. She was saying "Mama and Dad" way too early. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Way too early. Yeah. Um, but it was Miss Rachel. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. Th- she's she figured out the magic. God, she's a genius. Yeah. She's, Love that yeah. woman. And but you know, with the thing, I was like, "Where's her album? Where's her album?" And then Aries like, "Look, she's recording an <gasps> album." Of course she is. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. her husband's like super talented. Yeah. Like, compo- like not a is he a chore- choreographer? I think in, he like, was. Music yeah, for theater. Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's her whole everything. I guess uh, the story that I was told is like that she, her kid she became like a speech therapist to help her yeah. son. And then during COVID, she was like, "Well, let's do these videos." Because she's also a kindergarten teacher. Yeah. Um, and an early development specialist. Yeah. And then she started recording the episodes because she was bored. And now they've got like 60 million views. You got to have her on your podcast. I would love to have her on my podcast. Yeah, I think she's like perfect for my podcast. Yeah, she's not the right audience for me, <laughs> uh, for my people. If you like, who the fuck's Miss Rachel? <laughs> like, She'd be like, what? hi. <laughs> oh my God, did you see the TikTok of the people that were like, this, it was a couple having sex and she's like, put it in, in put, put it yep. in, <laughs> In. Did you see though when everyone's like Miss Rachel's a baddie because they thought she had nipple piercings, but it was just sequins on her <laughs> no, shirt. No, they were like Miss Rachel the baddie, and th- it was just like she had like sequ- like I don't know some kind of something <laughs> oh reflecting. Oh my god, I yeah. wish Miss Rachel had nipple rings. I'd be like, I get it, <laughs> right? I get it. Sometimes you just got to while out Sometimes while teaching you those do. ABCs. You know? Teach her in the front, party in the back. You know, <laughs> like there is something about I do understand the desire to to. Um, go in and and see the curriculum that your child is being taught. I yeah. do understand that as a parent now. I do I do understand that because there is something very uh, primal about wanting to raise your children um, uh, to to have your ideology and your thought process, whatever that may be, yeah. and and so wanting to safeguard that mm-hmm. and and you know, make sure that they're learning things at the right time in their lives. And I do believe that it is up to the parent to sure. determine what that is. Absolutely. Um, so whatever that is for other people, I do I do find myself as a parent wanting to be a little bit more hands on and and, you know, I am all for um, acceptance and love and everybody living their life and their truth. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, in our household, I will be, you know, I will make sure that our daughter is is that we are in touch with the things that she is learning. Sure. Yeah. It's you know, I kind of I remember when I was a kid and we did sex ed, you had to send home. You did a a, a letter. And there was like a syllabus of like, this is what the kids are going to learn. Parents, you have permission for them to learn it. Sign it. Bring it back. I vaguely remember that that health was an elective. And our parents had to sign off Mm -hmm. on the electives that we chose. So I do vaguely remember that. I think it's been so long since I was in school that I forgot it. I mean, I definitely remember learning about, you know, sex ed when we were kids. But I do, the curriculum was very scientific 
and anatomy based. Yeah. I do remember the thing that still haunts me till this day, learning about cheesy white discharge. Oh my still, God. Still till this day. I think I was in like <laughs> eighth grade and it was- That's a, what we're going to name this podcast. <laughs> it was a discussion about STDs. Yeah. And I was like, if that doesn't fucking scare you to not have anything, right. I don't want cheesy white discharge. No. No. My God. No, thanks. No. Hey, it's Jack Osborne here. And Ghost and Grit is sponsored by Blue Chew. It's time to talk about something that may be hard to talk about. Sex. So let's make it easy. It's BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a service delivering chewable tablet with the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra. And you can take them anytime, day or night. You sign up at BlueChew.com and chat with a licensed medical provider. And once approved, you receive this really super discreet little brown envelope in the mail. And you're on and pop in. Bada bing, bada boom. You know what I'm saying? When my little package arrived, I had no idea what it was because it was so freaking discreet. It was this little brown envelope, my name on it. I was like, what's this? Open it up. And I got these little chewable packets of goodness. And my God, does this shit work. It definitely... uh. Reminds me of, uh, you know, the old days. All right, so Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. You Ghost and Grit fans out there. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code GHOSTS at the checkout. And you only pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code GHOSTS to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring our dear old podcast. It's quite funny. My daughter right now, we took her to the the pediatrician for like a checkup. And the pediatrician was very impressed by the things that she knew. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that my child's a genius, but she's a genius. And <laughs> she knows all anatomy. And she was like, and she was like, I just want to, you know, is your daughter learning anatomy? And we were like, yeah, we've taught her everything. And she's like, accurately. And we're like, yeah, Jenny, where's your vagina? And she went. <laughs> pointed right to it and she's like data penis <laughs> and we're like yep yep that's it data has a penis yeah Ginny has a vulva robin's like katie it's a vulva i was like i don't fucking know robin it's a vagina <laughs> i don't know where the vulva yeah, is it's like, fine but it's all it's all in the same it's all there yeah. i don't you know like as long as she calls it something along those lines we're good totally and yeah. like do you know do you know about i'm sure you've researched this about like perverts right like they if you if kids refer to their anatomy by their like actual name versus like nicknames yeah it's a deterrent for oh is it appa really? apparently yeah because my daughter's gonna be like fuck you get off my vagina yeah. <laughs> throw punch <laughs> yeah, exactly. she might right she might she might we we're getting ready to sign her up for like this tutu class but also like karate yeah no i, like I had jujitsu or something i had my daughters in jujitsu for a little bit and yeah. then Andy, I'm like so heartbroken by this, but Andy, um, she's my my eight year old, and mm -hmm. she's a she's a psychopath. Like I'll I'll own it. She's, you got to have one. Yep, and she's you know amazing, but incredibly OCD and incredibly like kind of quirky, and you know she only wore the same pair of underwear for like three years in a row. Like I had to and you wash had to wash it every, every night. Every night we're watching Elsa right now. Her okay. her Elsa dress is yeah. being washed every night. Yeah, you kind of they she got she got locked in, but she became a phenomenal gymnast. Oh, yeah. Like to the point where like coaches were like, oh my God, like this Your girl. child's gifted. Yeah, like she can like, we, you know, championships, Olympics, like really? this is in her future if she wants it. <laughs> yeah. And she fucking quit. No. I'm like, oh. I'm like, it literally, I was so, cause it like, there was like nothing for me more exciting than like going to, I'd go and like hang out for hours. You're like, Tokyo, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get on that fucking podium. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Simone Biles can eat it. Exactly. Um, but no, she was like, I mean, I, I'll show you shit. And it's like, you're like, oh my God. And she was the youngest in her group. And it was, she just. Do you have any indication why she quit? <sighs> She's, um, I think it was, I think there was some kind of, outside influence from you know other things yeah. that she was like you know especially it was summer all her friends were playing doing things yeah and she was training 25 hours a week yeah and i mean tough. yeah the gym it was she in the summer she was going four days a week from like one to seven i think that I, you know i identify with that because it, uh, when i was swimming I feel like I missed a lot mm. you know when I was doing those daily doubles and like swimming in the morning and at night and then on weekends, it, it's a lot. And when yeah. I got hurt when I was 16, 
you know, at the time I didn't have the courage to tell my parents. It was an injury. I was definitely injured and I was a breaststroker and and there's a definite timing to that that stroke mm. that takes a while to learn. Um and you can lose it. Um and I I leaned into that injury a little harder mm. than I needed to because I didn't want to swim anymore. Yeah. And I quit. Do you regret cutting? No. Because I became an actor. Yeah. It's what I wanted to do. I just didn't have the courage. So this is the thing with your daughter. I didn't have the courage to quit something that I was so good at. Yeah. Because everybody told me how good I was and how gifted I was and how I could swim in college and how this was the thing. And then this was it was it was set. My parents had spent so much money and so much time helping me and taking me to practice and moving to different teams and driving me so far away to get to better clubs and and to then stand up and say, I don't enjoy this, that was a little too much for me at the time. Yeah. So when I did get hurt, it was very easy to say, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. I mean, and it's funny, like Andy, she's, she wears her emotions on her sleeve. Mm. She doesn't like something. She's like, she'll let you know instantly and it'll be followed by some kind of, you know, meltdown. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, she was just, it, you know, it was funny. She, I could tell she, she wanted to quit for a while, but mm. she- she knew she was too good to quit. Same thing like you're saying. Yeah. And then she was like, I'm done. I'm not doing yeah. this. And I actually, I gave a, I, she she had a crazy meltdown during practice one day mm. and I was trying to calm it down. And I was like, let's just, like, if this is happening, let's just pack this up. Mm. And she was like, okay. And I was like, let's finish out the week and then let's, let's be done. And she yeah. was like, okay, I'm done. But that's beautiful that you were able to say that as a parent. Yeah. You know, that takes a lot of, of, self-awareness and and empathy for a child who is their own individual mm. to be able to notice that they're not in the best place that if they're acting up and their emotions are all over the place when they're doing something that sh that should be fun yeah um that there's something off you know yeah yeah it's uh you know it's uh you know it, it's it's funny the thing i notice about you having multiples, you know, kids. Yeah. You kind of have to. It. They're they're all your kids, but they're so, everyone's so different, and like the way that you kind of have to, you know, I deal with Andy is so different from Pearl and Minnie yeah. and Maple. It's like you have to kind of tailor everyone's own kind of experience. It's true. It's true. You can't even if it seems from the outside that you're raising your children similarly or the same. Like I, I always like to say that my parents raised my brother and I the same. There's absolutely no way that they did. Yeah. You can't possibly raise two kids the same no. way. Yeah. No. Are you? Uh, so you have the you have your one daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, wh uh, how old is she now? 19 months okay. I, at what point do we stop with this bullshit two 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 when you get into the 20s then you stop doing the months so i've got to stop we got to get in the 20s yeah you got one more month and then you can be like she's nearly two december 6th okay like someone asked her today how old she was and like i was trying to teach her how to do one and a half and i was mm -hmm. like fuck it just put up two fingers just yeah. put up two fingers they'll believe it my dad's like, birthday is december 3rd is it yeah it's a good it's a good time. Yeah. 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 I tried to convince my husband to let me name her Christmas and he wouldn't do it. Christmas is a great name for a I girl. I thought it was an, a Christmas Gatsby. Yeah. Come that's on. kind of like. He wouldn't let me do it. I mean, she would have to only wear like, you know, velvet slippers and like. <laughs> and be in Hallmark movies. Yeah. And like and like. carry like a martini glass. I'm right. Christmas Gatsby. <laughs> she would have to. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to be a really a beautiful novelist or something. And a huge collection of pearl necklaces. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And like she only wears like uh you know gowns evergreen <laughs> gowns but like evergreen like smells you yes. know like christmas smells mm -hmm. she walks in she smells like gingerbread or she smells like she just cut down a tree but you'd have to be okay with her smoking cigarettes with the long filter <laughs> that's that's the only downside and what, like eating dalmatians <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that i mean she will be crazy she's she will be crazy do that's you now how would you feel if she wanted to be like mom i want to be an actress are Fuck you good no no my husband and I are both very athletic mm -hmm. and he's really tall. And we're having this discussion around football because football season is starting. We were watching the Netflix show, the quarterback show that just came out. So they were, um, uh, oh my God, the names, the three quarterbacks. How do I not? I know yeah. this. It's mom brain. Um, they were following uh, the Minnesota Vikings quarterback, um, who is just a phenomenal person. I can't remember why I can't remember his name right now. Um, Kansas City's quarterback, which I also can't remember his name right now, which is crazy. I don't know what's happening with my brain. Um, regardless, the point was we were having a discussion about whether we would let 
a, a son play football. Mm. And we said, no, absolutely yeah, not. That. There's no way with what we know about head injuries yeah. and the body. But then we started to think about it a little bit more. And it's like, if we did everything in our power to dissuade a son from playing football and like introduced him to like basketball and baseball and like every other sport we could come up with, mm -hmm. but they were gifted and like a phenomenal football, like they just were kept going toward football. I don't know how you stop them. You know, because at a certain point, they're their own You break their ankles. You have to, right? You just like. Yeah, you break their ankle, they can't what, run. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> you just, Mis like, misery and, style. And then just put, just put a board. They take a tree that, you know, a, a, yeah. a piece of the tree my daughter just cut down and put it between <laughs> his legs and knock him out. I don't know what I would do. So I, I have zero desire for a child to follow in my footsteps. Yeah. I just, you have to be a little off to handle this industry mm -hmm. and to um to allow or not allow it to break you mm -hmm. um or change who you are as a person it's not easy no and, and absolutely i'm not like not. patting myself on the back i don't know how i did it yeah so i don't know how i could train someone else to do what i did um well i think it's funny i mean the pod uh, my podcast ghosts and grit and i yeah. think i think you know i it's funny when, when we were like, oh, you know, who should we have on? And I was kind of, I was like, oh, we should have Katie on. Cause like, I, I see you and I know you as like a, you're a gritty person. Like you will get dirty and you will throw down and, and you have this kind of, you know, I don't know you super well, mm -hmm. but like from what I do know of your career, it's like, oh, you're not afraid to like put in hard work and persevere. Yeah. And that's, and that's something where, you know, we do discuss like, can grit be taught or is that something that you're just born with? It's an interesting question, you know, I always say that if I could leave my children, I, I keep saying children, I only have one, but um, well, probably I'd like two. to have more. Um, if I could gift my children anything at all, it would be resiliency. Mm. And that is grit. That is the ability to get back up in the face of adversity and mm -hmm. keep going. Um, and And I don't know if you can teach that. I think you can. I think you can. I don't know how yet. Yeah. Um, you know, my parents never never told me I could couldn't do something um they always let me follow what I wanted to do but they always encouraged me to go do stuff yeah all the time all the time you know um so they were were they really supportive of you becoming an actress yes and no yes in the sense that they allowed me to move to Los Angeles um, and I say aloud, I was 18, mm -hmm. um, just turned 18. So well, they, I, I wouldn't let my daughter move to Los Angeles at 18. 18. Yeah. I'm like, fuck no. My mom drove me down here at 18 years old. Wow. In a U-Haul and left. Wow. Left. They helped me find an apartment mm -hmm. and they left me here. When was this? 1998. What a good time to be in L.A., though. It was a great time. 98 in LA. in L.A. was rad. The only thing you had to worry about was, like, O.J. Yep. Like, I did fit a mold. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> just, like, stay out. And I say Don't go this to Brentwood. I say this because I lived in Brentwood. And my I went out to, to dinner with my dad one day. And he goes, guess who I just met in the lobby? I was like, who? And he's like, O.J. We had drinks all night. I was like, awesome, Dad. Holy shit. Yeah. Um. Um. But so that was it was a great time to be here. It was a great time to move here. This city felt really safe. It did. Then. It felt really safe. I, I tell my kids, you know, my, my daughter's 11. And I was like, you know, when I was like 12 and 13, I used to ride my bike to the Sunset Strip. I'd go see a band yep. until like 10, 30, 11 yep. at night, ride my bike home. Yep. It was safe. It was fine. It was a very different city than it is now. Yeah. It was a very different city. Do you think you're going to stay here? We already sold our house. Okay, so you're no, leaving the state. We're leaving the state. Okay, yeah, yeah we're have, leaving the state. Do you have any idea where you? Oh, you... Well, we're moving to Portland. Okay, which people in their oh, minds God. are like, "Why would you move Why? to Portland?" <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> I grew up into Portland, oh, and okay. I believed what everybody said about Portland. And then we went to Portland, mm -hmm. and we saw what everyone was talking about. And my husband and I looked at each other and went, "This is fucking child's play." It's true. They don't get it. But you, you living in Venice though, so you were in the thick of the madness. Yeah, we're in, we're in the madness. Yeah, we're in the madness. Wow. Yeah, I still love it. Yeah, I still love it. There is, there is an element of this city and this city's grit mm. that I appreciate. I appreciate it, and I, I don't personally myself feel unsafe, 
but I don't want to raise my daughter here. Totally. Like I, yeah. I, I mean, I live in a, I, I live right around the corner from here, yeah. and it's it's a you know it's the valley. It's, it's nice. It's very different over here on this side. It feels like. But it's still I still don't feel okay with like my kids going outside to play. Yeah. And that sucks. It does suck. It does suck. It's um it's not fair that we are creating an environment where our children aren't safe yeah and for a multitude of reasons and there are things that are outside of people's control and things that are inside of our control i mean i think that the internet as much as it has revolutionized uh, so many things in our our lives and and but i think part of the reason why you and i were able to grow up the way we did is that connectivity didn't exist yeah you were allowed to make mistakes and have that mistake be forgotten that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Kids don't have the ability to go outside their house and 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 have something affect them that will go away. You know what I mean? If that's the that's may not be the easiest the best way to explain that, but but the that's not to say that kids when we were kids didn't experience trauma that stayed with them forever. Of course they did. But the trauma that kids experience now is different. Yeah. Is very different. Yeah, it's it's uh it's three dimensional in a weird way because now it's like it used to just be like trauma would be an interaction with an individual yeah. or at school or something. And now it's like it's that it's a, it's at school. And now it's in that machine in that yeah. pocket when they come home. It scares me. It scares me. You know, I, I forget the number, but it's it's uh, something like 50 percent of teenage girls have considered have contemplated suicide. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. No. It's absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying. And kids are mean. I'm just getting there with kids Pearl. Kids are mean. Like, I'm just starting to see it. Like, Pearl went to camp this year, and she went in later. It was just a day camp. Um, and kids were kind of, they'd already clicked up, and she was the new kid, and they weren't being cool with her. And and she loves the camp so much, and she was just, she was like almost willing it to be the way she wanted. And it just, yeah. and I was, my heart was breaking for her. Of course. Um. But I'll give you my, this is my favorite parent pro hack. Yeah. Um, so when your daughter gets older, mm. because you're going to want, for me anyway, I wanted like, well, if she goes with friends, like, I, I want to be able to get a hold of her, but I don't want to get her a fucking cell phone. Did you just microchip her? Uh, no, I got her the Apple Watch because she uh -huh. can't download apps. I can track her where she is. I can call her and she can text. Yeah. And it's fucking great because it's like, all right, no one need, I'm not going to have like a, private conversation doesn't matter she just talks yeah. dick tracy's it like she's yeah. gonna look like a dumbass <laughs> yeah. like this um, yeah have you uh speaking of like life hack stuff mm. have you have you ever uh spoken to or read any of andy galpin stuff no okay i'm gonna connect you with andy galpin okay okay andy's uh I, we're not super close but we have a very close mutual friend yeah and, um I know him from my gym, and um, and Andy is a professor, I think, at UC Irvine, and he okay. it oversees like the sports science division there, yes. I believe. And he's doing shit that you would not believe. He's building essentially houses for athletes that are like optimized with like carbon dioxide and how you sleep, and like it, it's fucking wild. This, this is literally my like my passion. Okay, I. If I didn't have my bum hips, would even at my age, like try to find some sort of sport I could compete in, mm -hmm. even at this age? Jiu -jitsu. I Jiu -jitsu. it would kill me. No, it wouldn't. I don't like it wouldn't. fists flying at my it's face. It's not punching. I, it just makes me feel I'm weird. Telling you, you would love it. Really, you would love it. I don't know. I I have a friend who just like broke their knee in jujitsu, so like it feels a little like mm, yeah, I but, don't know. If I but want you it. broke your hips running. Yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> I I am more like competitive in the sense that like I really got into Spartan races. Yeah, I remember seeing that. You were like fucking loved it. You were like Queen Spartan. I did. Like I would I would be doing some CrossFit. I would be doing all of these things, and because I love to like win everything. Mm. Well, like, you just got a look in your eye, there, Katie. You were like, I wish win everything. <laughs> everything. If I go to Pilates. I want everyone around me to feel like I'm winning. Okay. I want to win stationary bike riding. <laughs> like I am like this crazy person. I have a Peloton. I like to beat everybody in that list just okay. to let them know. They're that, in like, the I arena with you. That I see you, mm -hmm. Pam from Idaho. I got you. <laughs> you may be 30, but this 40-year-old bitch just beat you. Do you see that, Pam? 
I love this. I love it. So my goal in life is to to op- live at my optimal level as long as possible. Okay. And so I'm really into like I'm going to connect you with the Andy. function of the body and things and the, that we can do. The cool thing that Andy does is everything is diet because he has really? so many athletes yeah. that all have different doping. You know, oh, you can't yeah. take this, you can't take that. So he he believes that everything your optimum kind of functioning level can be attained all through diet. I don't disagree. I think that food is one of it, it is the most important aspect of what we can do to for, to the benefit of us in longevity and moving forward and 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 functioning at an optimal level. Yeah. I also believe that it is the cause, the root cause of a lot of the issues mm-hmm. that people in our country are experiencing, Without whether it's diabetes, over the obesity, um, uh, people like autoimmune, autoimmune diseases in children, children having all these allergies. Like I think that the shit that we're putting in our food is 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 the cause of so many things. There are little girls that are like eight years old getting periods now. Please, I was 16 when I got my period. Dude, my, my daughter's 11. She's like, I, it's it's crazy it's on the horizon. Yes. Like, she woke up a couple of days ago just crying. Oh yeah, it's coming. Just like, it's coming. And, just, and I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, I don't know, just hold me. Yeah. You know, just holding her. She was just crying. Just explaining to a little girl, maybe I was 15 when I got my period, but like explaining to a little girl who's bleeding out of, themselves Mm -hmm. what this whole thing is i can't fathom having that conversation when i was 11 years old yeah i was still playing with barbies yeah you know what they think is uh, i read something uh blue light from screens yeah they think they're saying that's a huge contributing factor i don't understand what it is about the blue light but it does something to your hormones it doesn't that doesn't surprise me it doesn't surprise me you know, watching our daughter. So even something like Miss Rachel, we we don't. My husband didn't want any screens until we were two, and I was like, right, that'll be that'll be the day. <laughs> do, do you not want to eat at a restaurant until you're two? <laughs> yeah. So we, I, we are those parents that bring everything to entertain our child except yeah. a, a a thing. Yep. But our daughter got sick, and we had a lot of doctor's appointments. <clears throat> Making a child sit still, who's ten months old for 12 hours that's impossible yeah like especially when they just started walking Mm -hmm. so we found that's how we found miss rachel and like it was a godsend it was amazing and she like really helped us through a lot of that shit but on the days now when she gets miss rachel which is not every day it's like probably twice a week she gets miss rachel for like 15 20 minutes um and it's usually when mommy and daddy have to like make a phone call and we have to focus or something and she has to um, it's like, Katie, you don't have to justify it. Like, I mean, it's I'm, good. It's, you're good. You know, like, it's, it's, it makes me feel like a bad parent. No, like, you're not. Here's the screen. Shut the fuck up. Um, totally fine. But on the days that she gets Miss Rachel, she's harder to control. Mm. She's control the wrong word. Harder to manage. Mm-hmm. She's harder to keep tabs on. Her emotions are all over the place. She is. She is inconsistent. She is not Interesting. So as you've... potty trained. She is. Everything is all over the place on days that she gets any sort of screen. I found beatings really do help that. I mean, listen, it worked for us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I favor a uh, bar of soap and you wrap it up in a towel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, that, Prison style. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally. It's, Absolutely. And, but nothing, you know, nothing, uh, you know, uh, below the elbow or yeah. above the neck. Well, so what I have found is if you put a motorcycle helmet on them and hit the helmet. Yeah, you can that's do good. the most amount of damage without leaving a mark. It's true. Yeah. And yeah. it really rings that bell. It really does. <laughs> really. <laughs> can you imagine? There is going to be somebody. <laughs> Who thinks I'm fucking serious? <laughs> Somebody in the world is going to be like, she is insane. She beats her child. She beats her kids, and and CSP is going to show up at my right. door. It's okay. I'll we, show up at my door. We'll we'll tell them it was all a joke, right? And then it's fine. <laughs> it's all a joke. You can come get your child in six weeks. Mm, no oh god. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it like the. There is, a, I think, a fine balance. Everything's about balance with kids that I've mm. learned. You can't just go hard in one 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 arena or the other. You have mm. to. You know, a little bit of Miss Rachel, a little bit of playing with some wooden toys. Oh, maybe a little toy that, you know, whatever. Yeah, just it's take, true. Mm-hmm. A wooden toy. Yeah. My God. I just, everything's beige now. Every, uh, you have a sad beige baby? Because I have a sad beige baby Do right you? now. No, I don't. Okay. I have gone the opposite direction. My child wears like Moana, everything Disney. Yeah. Moana clothes. She's got Mirabelle on her shirt. She's obsessed with like, she's got to have like Muppet baby. She doesn't even watch Muppet, the Muppets. Mm-hmm. She's got Muppet underwear. She's got it all. My child looks like 
primary colors vomited on them. Does she know that you are uh, in Mandalorian? Because by does. my five year old, Mandalorian's her favorite show. She's been yeah. watching it since she was three. And she fucking loves it. She won't watch <laughs> cartoons. Yeah. And she'll she calls it monster because in start of season two when there's the big monster. The big monster. Yeah, she yeah. calls it she's like, I want to watch monster. Yeah. And she just she must have watched that's that so episode funny. forty times. Yeah. And loves it. And loves it. Yeah. No, she does. She the first time she cause she she grew up seeing me in the the wig. Yeah. So she knew that that was mommy. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first time that she saw it on screen, I didn't think that she would actually understand. Mm -hmm. And as soon, the second I came on camera in season three, she went, mommy, <laughs> and like walked over and was like watching mommy. And then she went, baby Goku, <laughs> mommy, baby Goku. And she just like understands it now. Yeah. And now she has like this, this doll, this bow doll that she carries around and she calls it her mommy doll. That's great. <laughs> it's quite funny. Did you, yeah. cause you did the voice before. I did. Like, yeah. were you, when you heard that they were, oh, they're gonna live action it, were you like, put me in there or did they just call you being like, we want you? They just called me, I was really lucky. That's yeah. rad. Yeah, they did, it was really rad. Um, it was great, it was wonderful. It's, you know, it's the way that, that you want your career to go and it never does. Mm -hmm. And then finally after 25 years, it happens and you're like, this is the way. Shit, <laughs> it finally happened, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of awesome that, you it know. is kind of awesome. I know. It's like, uh, but I, you know, the one thing I say all the time is that it would be, I think it would have been very different if for the last 25 years I was like, you know, running around in corsets mm -hmm. and period pieces and like playing damsels in distress. I don't think I would have, it would have been as easy for them to picture me in the role. Do those roles, uh, are you, would, do those roles attract you if there was some period damsel in distress piece? A hundred percent. Okay. That's just not where people see me. Yeah. And so I think it's sort of that thing where, you know, when you have straight hair, you want curly hair. And when you have curly hair, you want straight hair. You always want the thing that you can't have yeah. um, or that isn't readily available to you. And, and so, of course, I want to play all those characters. It's just never, never come up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you, I mean, do you reflect about, I mean, because you've, your career, you've been a part of, a lot of amazing franchises, you know, yeah. from Battlestar to Longmire, now Mandalorian. Is it a thing where you where you look back at that being like, wow, that's fucking awesome, or you just it just is? I think that there are absolutely moments where I stop and smell the roses, mm. especially now that I'm older and I realize sort of the whole career is like a as like a thing, like mm -hmm. a like a 25 year thing. Um. When I'm in the moment, I don't. It feels just like work, and I just keep plowing ahead. Yeah. But I, I definitely have gotten um, sort of like uh, romantic in my in my um, my memory, you know, and and the way that I look back on things now, and and how long it's been, and and the characters that I've been able to play, and and you know, I just sort of I do marvel sometimes that 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 it actually worked. Mm. That it worked. You know, I moved here when I was, like I said, I was, the first time I came down, I was 17 with my mom and um, met my manager and agent and, and, you know, and then moved down here when I was 18. And I always knew that I could do this. I think that blissful ignorance of youth allowed me to believe that I could do this, but I never actually, I never actually questioned whether or not I would get the opportunity. Yeah. You know, I just hoped that I would and I believed that I would because you have to believe that it's possible. Um, but I don't I don't think I ever dreamed that I would get to the level that I'm at. Mm. I don't think I, I did. Um, you know, you asked earlier if my parents supported me. They did. But my dad, they truly believed that like a year later I would be home. Mm. They did. It was hard, you know, when you're 18 and you move to a different state. And I think when a lot of kids that age go to college and, and they they follow that path, which I think is a is a fa fantastic thing for so many kids. It wasn't right for me. And, and I went a different direction, but I had no structure. I had no there was nobody watching out for me. Um, I was learning how to live as an adult from the moment I left that house. Many people do it. It's nothing special, but at the same time, there were there 
the fact that I didn't go home, I think, surprised them. Interesting. Yeah. Do you, um, did you, were you, was it, do you think that it surprised them because they just thought, oh, this is a fad, she'll grow out of it, she'll come back, go to college, get a degree, and go work in an, you know, a normal industry? I don't think they thought I'd ever go to college because I was never, um, I never excelled enough in academia to actually go to college if I wasn't going to go on a athletic scholarship. Mm. Um, um, but I think that, I think my parents, you know, when your child wants to do something that you haven't navigated ahead of them, you didn't pave the way first and you don't understand it. I think that when your child tells you that they're going to move to California and be an actor, you immediately go... <laughs> okay good luck yeah okay but they let me do it you know and my dad gave me great advice I called him when I at some point during the audition process of it very early on and I said every single girl looks exactly like me I'm walking into rooms with 50 girls in them and you would think they're me like I don't I don't I can't I, can't, I don't know what to do yeah and my dad said, you better figure out what makes you different and special. Because if you can't, you might as well come home. Mm. That's, um, that's, yeah. It was great advice. It was great advice. Is that, and is the, was was what made you different and special the kind of, you know, because a lot of your roles are like, you you, pay a, you play a very tough character. Like yeah. that's, that's, you know, I think most people, how people, you know, envision you. Yeah. Was that, was that a deliberate move? Like, you know what, I'm going to be like the badass chick. As soon as I got the ability to choose roles and be more picky, 100% mm. it was. But before that, I just took everything that I could get. Everything I booked, I, I took. Yeah. Um, but the moment I had that, the benefit of choice, I, I, I navigated toward, and that Battlestar was the first one. Battlestar was the first job I ever did where I didn't play the annoying girl that you wish died in something. Because <laughs> I just played stereotypical blonde roles. Um, and I think that that was the moment where I realized what it was that made me different. Yeah. And it's that I took strong characters and made them vulnerable. Mm. And I think that up till that point, a lot of the female characters that were written strong were just written strong and they were very flat. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of times we got confused because we look at someone like Sigourney Weaver in Alien who was so capable and so strong. But I think that we focus on those things and we forget that she was also vulnerable. Yeah. Um, she had to save Jonesy the cat. She did. She did. Um, and and that made her strong. Um, and so, um, yeah. So was I think was Sigourney Weaver mm -hmm. uh, an act an actress that you were like I I I like that like that's you know one hundred percent. And there are moments in my career where I just try to be her. You know, I think that I wanted to walk around in my bra and underwear in another life because I was trying to like that was my Sigourney Weaver moment. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, of course, like I I wanted to be her. Like you know, her and Bruce Willis, they were like my people. Yeah, I just wanted to to save the Nakatomi building and fight aliens. Yeah. What did you think of um, when, God, what's her name? Um, uh, Jennifer Lawrence said, I was the first female action lead. <laughs> <laughs> did that make you just kind of go like, all right, all right? You know, I think that sometimes um, people say something in, in a context that in the context of their understanding, yeah, it made sense. You know, you, you know what you know what I kind of thought for that. What I because I went, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding yeah. me. But you know what I think maybe she was trying to say mm. is of her generation potentially. Yeah, she yeah, yeah. she was the first sci-fi female action. I mean, maybe. Well, and at the end of the day, you also can't hang Jennifer Lawrence's hat on one comment. She has been a role model and a strong female role model for so many young girls yeah um and and she has opened a lot of doors for people that doesn't mean that that so many before her hadn't done the same thing for her yeah um and i don't think that she would ever say that mm -hmm. i just think that 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 sometimes in interviews we say things that that in the moment what we mean and what comes out of our mouths are two very different things sure and sometimes I, I do it with my husband. I'll say something and he'll be like, do you realize what you just said? And I was like, 
yeah, I said this. And he's like, no, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I think it happens Cancel. to the best of us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen, I'm a shovel ball change away from it <laughs> every day of my life. Um, but yeah, no. Yeah. Where, where are you at with the strike? Where am I at with it? Are you like, what are you, what are you hearing? What's the word on the street? I have no idea what the word on the street is. I don't, you know, I have a, I have a young child that yeah. I'm with every single day. You're not so out there in front of Warner Brothers or anything. I'm not. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that I wouldn't. Yeah. You know, we are we are operating under a contract that is outdated. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um. You know, there is no reason why working actors can't afford to live in California. Yeah. It's wrong. It is wrong when when the disparity between money is so massive. Yeah. Um, something needs to change. I think that um, AI is a problem, but I think that it is not, in my opinion, the thing that we should be focusing on right now. I think it's part of it. But I think the biggest thing right now is we need to figure out the the residuals and we need to figure out the amount of money that people are being paid because it's not it's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair. So I am all for it. At the same time, I am also very, very hyper aware how many people's jobs are on pause right now. And it's not cool. Yeah. And it's tough. And, and it's it's uh, there are people that make a lot less money than actors that can't work right now as well yeah and we need to be aware of that yeah, the, yeah i mean the crew like i mean they're not the crew yeah the crew the makeup artists the the grips the you know the special fa- every single person from the top to the bottom the 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 you know the the people who make the food the the caterers the the janitorial staff at all of these studios that that the 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 people that work at the restaurant across the street from the studio that used to do the the those waiters those 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 staff there the yeah. the there are so the trickle down effect of this business being in pause is palpable in this business mm-hmm. and you know one of the reasons we're moving is that I don't know if I can afford my house yeah. in 10 years. Do you realize how sad it is? And I'm not saying – look, this strike is not for me. This, I'm going to be fine. Mm. I'm. This strike is for people that are below the line actors, who are working actors, who cannot afford to live in this city, in this state anymore, and they can't even afford their health insurance. That is not okay. Yeah, I'll be fine. You know, but I need to support the the entire strike because I need to support actors. Sure. And I need to support the artists that 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 need to be paid. And it calling it a living wage is not I think it gets mixed up. Sometimes mm-hmm. the sometimes the 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 verbiage that we that we hold on to is not necessarily accurate. But it is in this state accurate. Mm-hmm. The living wage in this state is not something that is attainable in our industry for for the majority of our unions right now, and yeah. that's not okay. Yeah, no, it's so true. Like I, I read something that I don't know if this is totally true, but what ninety percent of SAG members earn less than thirty six thousand dollars a year. Eighty seven percent don't make enough for health insurance. Yeah, it, it's it's and there there are problems from top to bottom. There are problems with the union. Yeah. You know, that that an actor like myself who's been in the union for 25 years and paid into that union and pays a percentage to that union who has never not made enough every year for my health insurance. If I miss one year, one year, I don't make enough. I will lose my health insurance. Yeah. And my holds for the shows that I'm on are more than a year. Yeah. And <laughs> So I can be held long enough that I lose my health insurance. Yeah. And the fr- That's not okay. And the frustrating thing that I think a, a lot of the general public don't understand is like, yeah, you get paid a lot when you're working, but realistically, if you're not on a series, you're doing two, three, if you're lucky, four jobs a year. Yeah. Like on a great solid year. Yeah. And it's like I, you know, I mean, it's I don't I don't act, but work in TV, hosting shows, this yeah. and that, maybe one, two shows a year. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I get paid very well when I'm working, but mm-hmm. I have to make that. Pay, that that the money I get I have to make last. Yeah. 
you know, for the entirety until that next job comes yeah. up. There's no guarantee that that show will even come back. No, and not only that, I think that, you know, our contracts and the hold times were really great when you shot 22 episodes a season. Yeah. Because the hold time wasn't that long. You, it took nine and a half months to shoot. You had a couple months off. You came back and you kept going. Mm -hmm. A show like Longmire, we shot for four months. <clears throat> four months. But you're on hold for the rest of the year and you can't go do another television show. Yeah. So you're working for four months. Granted, that four months, you're making real great money. But that eight months, you're not, you're not working. Yeah. And if for some reason at the end of that eight months, they decide to cancel the show, you not only haven't worked for eight months, but now you got to go find another job. Mm -hmm. That's not easy yeah. in this industry. And people think all the time, like, why don't you just go do a Marvel movie, Katie? That'd be great. I'm like, they've never called. <laughs> Yeah. I would love to yeah. go do a Marvel movie. The moment they call, yeah. I will go do that. <laughs> like it's not I don't <laughs> I don't get to go determine what my career looks totally. like. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I am at the whim of of the opportunity that people think I'm capable of. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's uh it the uh the sexiness is gone from it. And that's what's <laughs> like it used to be like cool, fun, like whatever. And then especially when you have kids, it's like it ain't about me anymore. It's like I got I got to figure this little humanoid out now for the next yeah. eighteen to twenty one years, depending yeah. on how things are structured. Yeah, you can't send them to a, a public school here in California. No. You got to send them to private school, and yeah. that's like thirty thousand dollars for kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's wild. <laughs> it's so much money. Yeah. it's just it, it just so it is one of the reasons why we've left. It's yeah. it's the 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 cost of living, um, in this state is too high, for, uh the 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 life that i've made for myself the yeah. way that we live our lives yeah. and 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 the thing is i get frustrated when you know you'll see st things online or whatever and not that i pay too much attention to it but everyone just assumes well you've got a billion dollars it's like no like this place is expensive yeah you know what 50 percent goes goes to uncle sam and then yeah. you're like okay and it's 11 dollars for a cup of coffee yeah I, I say this all the time and people don't understand it. Actors take home a fifth of their paycheck. Mm -hmm. A fifth. And so, you know, if you've got a person who's making $5,000 an episode for television and they take home a fifth of that and they do four of those jobs a year, they're making $4,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to live? A one-bedroom apartment is $2,800 and that's in a bad neighborhood. Yeah. $2,800. So what are they going to do? They're going to have another job. They're going to work two jobs. And then it's like, it's, so it's all of these things. It's just too expensive. Yeah. It's too expensive. And and, and, and then you've you know, got, you know, these huge media acquisitions going on, you know, billions and billions of dollars. And you're yeah. like, you know, I, I, I produce a lot of stuff for Discovery Plus, which is now Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah. And the interesting thing is in the last five years, a budget has not increased. In fact, they've tried to decrease budgets mm -hmm. and they don't take inflation into account. Yep. They don't take anything into it. It's like, well, if you can come in this season at the same price, we'll do it. And I'm like, well, actually, no, we're coming in at 15 percent lower because of inflation. Yeah. So what it's yeah. and it's horrible and they don't give a shit. But they meanwhile, they're, they're spending six billion, seven so billion dollars. So much money. So You're much like, money. And on one hand, it is a phenomenal thing, this golden age of television where there was so much content, but it's all shit. Mm -hmm. So stop making so much crap. Make some better content and yeah. maybe you won't spend so much money. Do you now? I saw this interesting breakdown. It was a, uh, you know, the comedian Andrew Schultz. No. Uh, he, he did this really interesting kind of like, Twitter kind of thought mm. where he was saying, you know, uh, he supports the strike. He thinks it's great. But here's what he was predicting. He's like, you're going to have a studio in order for them to release the information mm. of how many people are actually viewing. They're essentially going to show their hand that not as many people are watching these shows as they'd like to think, mm. at which point stock prices are going to plummet. Mm meaning they're going to have less money to spend on content mm -hmm. and then it's going to fall back on the actors and there's not as much work because now they're not buying, you know, a yeah. billion dollars a year of content. Doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, I you know, I, I really don't know. That's all above my pay grade and, and I don't I don't quite understand it. But I do. There there are because of streaming more opportunities for mm. actors right now. You know, when I started in this industry, 
there wasn't this much opportunity. Yeah. Um, so I think that there, you know, I, I don't, it, it could go back. It, we could go backwards a little bit, I think. Yeah. You know that that things may may slow down a little bit for uh, for this industry. Mm. Yeah. Do you uh, you know with you know with acting, what where what do you what would you love to do? Like what's your like mm. if someone said, all right, here is a blank check. What's the script you want to act in? What do you want to do? Like sky's the limit. You know, I I would love to do like a female Mission Impossible. I I love action movies. Mm. I grew up watching action and I I love playing characters who defy odds mm. if physically and figuratively. I love it. I should have something I got something to talk to you about. <laughs> yeah. Offline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, something interesting. Yeah. Uh, just just I had a had a oh wait, yeah. Um <laughs> uh, that's cool. Um yeah. all right, so on Ghost and Grit. Yes. We, you know, we love talking about paranormal, we love talking about grit. Like, you know, you are absolutely an embodiment of grit in not only in career but mm -hmm. in, in IRL. Oh, thank um, you. Where... I just realized what IRL meant the other day. Oh you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm oh. catching up. There you go. <laughs> welcome to twenty twenty three. You're welcome. It's beautiful welcome. around here. <laughs> okay. You know, there's homeless Co people COVID shitting in the street. Slowed me down. <laughs> yeah. Do you realize how many times a day I step over human shit? <laughs> oh my god. I am I uh, it's I've seen way too much human shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I gotta go. Too, too many junkies, too much human shit. <laughs> I gotta go. Yay, welcome to LA. <laughs> welcome to LA. Um, where are you at with the paranormal? Do you are you a believer in like ghosts and aliens? Mm. Do you get even deeper that we're living in a you know a simulation? Like <laughs> where are you at? Uh, so I am of the belief that this universe is I, I go back to Jodie Foster and and the idea that it would be a terrible waste of space mm. if we were the only ones here. So I I absolutely believe that there is something out there. Our our universe is so vast that we may never know in in the existence of human life um, if if something exists out there. Um, I do believe that it does. And as far as the paranormal is concerned, I, I absolutely believe in spirits and and um, sort of you know, the spirit world. Have you ever had an experience? I have, and I can't explain it. And I'm not that person. Like, I'm not a person that people would be like, oh yeah, of course, Katie believes in ghosts. Like, that <laughs> doesn't, like, I'm really pragmatic in, in who I am. Um, but I was living in my other, my old house with my ex, and um, I woke up one night and I heard him talking. It was so weird. And I literally, like, I was like, that's so weird. He doesn't talk in his sleep. And I rolled over and I saw this person over him with their mouth open, like, and he was whispering and like talking to them. And I was, hmm. it was that moment where you rub your eyes and I was so scared. I literally woke up Scott. I was like, Scott, Scott. And he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa what? And I was like, you're fucking, ta you're talking to yourself. But I was so scared that I like slept with my eyes open like the rest. Of, I was so scared. What did the what did the thing look like that was over? They him? looked like they were in like steampunk clothing. It was a guy and a girl. And then I saw him again about. I don't know. A day later, hmm. I saw them again and they were st I woke up in the middle of the night. And I saw them standing at the end of our bed, staring at us like you would a dead body. Like if you're at a viewing and someone's dead and people are staring over you, mm -hmm. that's what it looked like. It was a guy and a girl. And I was so scared. I literally put, and I'm getting goosebumps again. Yeah, right I'm now. getting, I'm literally like, getting yeah. goosebumps again. I, I covered myself in the, the blankets and I was fucking terrified. I called my mom the next day and I was so, like the next morning, so scared yeah that she believed me wow she was like i cannot i have never heard you so scared i was so scared and so i had someone come into my house and they said to me you have to tell these people you just have to walk around and say whatever you want i cannot help you you have to leave yeah i cannot help you please leave and so i did I just, every single time I was in my house and I felt something, I was like, I cannot help you. I'm so sorry. You have to leave. Yeah. And I never saw him again. Hmm. Interesting. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's. Yeah. 
it's funny because it's one of those things where you're like, no, that shouldn't that shouldn't happen. Like, that mm-hmm. should like in you know in in this world of like you know whatever yeah. we're operating in, you think like no, that that's impossible. Like yeah, I would you know I, were they translucent or did they look solid? They were translucent, okay. not translucent, but like um, uh, staticky, just like a little off white, mm-hmm. like camel colored almost, like like uh, tan. Yeah, but he was very tall and slim. And she was like a normal height, I guess. And someone said to me, my my ex said, he's like, do you think you could have imagined it? And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I honestly don't know. What I do know is it scared me so much that I f- found myself having someone come into my house to help get rid of them, yeah. which I never would have done. I was very scared. Yeah. Yeah, because they didn't seem friendly. I've been I've been dealing with something a little similarly to to that in the sense of you know I I do a lot of ghost shows I yeah. go investigate a ton of paranormal places I've been doing it for years now, and for the longest time I kind of took it for granted mm. I took it like with a grain of salt I'm like yeah it's you know there's something going on here I'm having yeah. these weird experiences I'm seeing stuff stuff like you know the divide the doodad devices we use will do stuff happens and and I was always just kind of like all right cool like and I I was like, oh, well, I don't take my work home with me, so no harm, no foul. And then over COVID, I was having these strange experiences at my house Mm. where uh, Aerie, my fiance, would wake up and she kept seeing this cloaked figure in our bedroom. And then one night I got up to pee and I was walking. I'm like half dead when Mm. I get up to pee Mm -hmm. in the night and I'm like kind of stumbling back. (laughs) And I look over and I saw this fucking cloaked figure in the bedroom and I was just like, oh, fuck. And I just like you're like oh god yeah can't, and I, can't get away from it yeah I was just like whatever I'm ignoring this and going to bed and then I uh, I woke up one night and I heard someone it sounded like someone came up beside my head mm. like and I was asleep and someone just went Jack and I sat up and I was like hello and I thought yeah. maybe it was one of the kids but I'm like why is a fucking kid gonna call me Jack yeah. like I'm like daddy or whatever yeah. and then I was I felt like someone tugged my foot one night and then. You know, I was having all these experiences and yeah. and then kind of some over the last few years, there's been some like weird negative shit happening. And I don't know. I just kind of had this realization recently. Uh, you know, I was like, holy fuck. Like, I think I might have some weird attachment. And I, and, yeah. But I've always been like, that's bullshit. Like, yeah. that's that's like a, a that's a very um, Catholic perception of like, oh, you can have a, a, a demonic attachment or a spirit or yeah. whatever. I've always just thought it was. It wasn't, and I, you know, and I'm still kind of developing what I really think this is that we experience. Yeah. And it has like shaken me to the point where like, like I had a full on like, oh my God moment. And I've been like trying to do all these like cleansings and like trying to get rid of it. And, you know, but a couple months ago I was sat in my, um, in my living room and I'd fallen asleep, like sat upright on our couch and the, the old house I was in. If I was facing the TV, I could see my kid's door like to the mm. right, like back. And I was there and I just kind of was dozing and I opened up my eyes and my kid's door just goes like opens. Ugh. And I was expecting to see out of the darkness because the glow yeah. of the TV was lighting up the hallway. Expecting to see one of my kid's little mm. faces pop out. I'm waiting and I'm looking and no one comes out. And I was like, I got the shiver and I was like, fuck no. Yeah. And I walked right into my kid's room and I was like, Get the fuck out. Yeah. I was like, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing here. Yeah. Get the fuck out of my kid's room right now. You're not welcome. Yeah. And it's funny, like every, you know, every like super deep paranormal investigator I know and psychic medium, like like yeah. the advice you got, like you can declare your space. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's weird. That would scare the crap out of me. Yeah. Yeah. That would, I, I don't believe that an entity could hurt me. Mm. I don't believe that. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't for the longest time, and I'll I'll show you some footage, oh, something that happened to my mom. I know. I'm a te- this this is the problem. I will never sleep again. <laughs> I there is an element of ignorance that yeah. I like to go through life with. Sure, I think we you all do. I mean? Like <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> I just want to be like, of course it doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, that's my goal in life to yeah. like not not see too much shit. 
to just protect myself because you can't you can't unsee shit no you can't <laughs> you can't yeah all you right can't. i won't show you the footage then it, it, <laughs> it happened it happened to my mom when we were i brought her on a ghost hunt and okay, she fine it fucking it was God, fucking it. nuts i will never go on a ghost that's hunt fine with you. that's totally fine never happen. i i used to think it was way more fun in games than it is yeah Put it that way like i've there's enough shit that's happened recently where i'm like i to be honest with you it's like shaking me of like yeah if i'm gonna keep doing this like i gotta I got to respect it a bit more. Yeah. I don't yeah, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree. There was a lot people saw a lot of stuff when we were filming in New Mexico. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuz you you fi you filmed uh Longmire there. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot. I remember one time I saw a little boy on the side of the road and I was like, "Wait, that's so weird. We should" and he was like everyone was like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "That's a little we should why why is that little boy walking down the side of the road by himself?" <laughs> and everyone was like, "There's nothing there." <laughs> You're like, and then oh. I turned and I yeah I was like did you guys see that little boy we should go get him no um <laughs> yeah did you ever um you because you grew up in Oregon right mm -hmm. um you know there's a super famous UFO photograph from like uh, like an hour away from where you grew up there is yeah in McMinnville yeah have you yeah. ever you ever seen it I have I have what's your uh what's your thoughts what's on my take yeah I think someone just threw a frisbee no I you know I think that there is wasn't there wasn't there like I, I I feel like that somebody thought that it was like hanging from wire from mm. like a telephone pole or something or like it was from string. I think I feel like I feel like somebody said like that they they that it was hanging from string from from like it was a disc yeah. thingy that was hanging from the the pole like the telephone poles. Mm. Yeah, I actually have that picture right here. That it's actually hanging. Yeah. I, well, hold on. Let me see. By string. I have. Um, Didn't someone also say that it looked like a the uh, the side mirror of a '50s Ford or something? I, you know, I did hear that. Mm -hmm. But these people, correct me if I'm wrong, but the couple was actually into aliens before. Ah, uh, okay. Wow, you know a lot about this. Before. Hold on. Where is that? So it's McMinnville is now wine country, by the way. Oh, fancy! <laughs> it's gonna take over Napa because there's no water left. Oh, oh, I guess that makes sense. I mean, yeah. There's plenty of water in Oregon. Plenty of water in Oregon. Um, yeah. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah, here it is. I mean, I, I, Here's the thing that intrigues me about it. Let right? me see the picture. All right. I haven't seen it for a while. Here's the. I mean. So the thing that intrigues me about it is that as um, uh, a lot of stuff coming out now about UFOs say that they kind of fly ass forward and it kind of looks like it's mid rotation. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, it, you know what? It's this is this is my thing about aliens is that I would love to. I would love, oh, sorry. No, I would no. love to um, feel like the aliens are going to come because I feel like something's got to save us. Yeah. Or just take me the fuck out of here as long as I can bring my kids. So. <laughs> bring my kids I don't some... like flying, but like I would be game. Wait, you, you don't like flying? No. What about a spaceship though? You fly a lot of spaceships. No, like if Elon said to me, do you want to go to Mars? I'd be like, go oh, fuck yourself. Yeah, no, I wouldn't go to fucking, no, 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 no. I'd go to the moon. Because I could still see Earth it's from- close. It's close. Because <laughs> it's close. I do like to see the ground when I'm flying. Yeah. So that's so... <laughs> like, like I'm good on a clear day yeah. when I can still see the ground. You're like, okay. If I'm it's like a cloudy day and I'm flying into Denver, I'm like, we're done. You're like, I don't we know where we are. We are done for. I don't know what is up. I don't know what is down. How does the pilot know where we are? Exactly. <laughs> so it, just, it freaks me out. It freaks me yeah, out. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I do actually, I, I have a fear of flying, but I want to get my pilot's license because I think it'll help. It does help. I've heard this. My brother has his pilot's license. Mm. And I have heard that the moment you understand how much the plane actually wants to stay in the air, you become a little bit more calm. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And then someone told me that takeoff and landing are the worst parts. And I'm like, that's when I'm good. Yeah. I'm good on takeoff and landing because I can see the ground. Yeah. They say it was a minute after takeoff is statistically if something's going to happen. That's is when it? it? That, in the first minute or 100 that's, seconds after takeoff. That's why I take Ativan to uh, fly. Okay. 
Yeah. You're one of those. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be like screaming that there's a, a, a non-human on the plane? Did you see that video? <laughs> I did that see lady? That, that lady. That motherfucker is not real. That's going to be you. <laughs> it's going to be me. There's a fucking Cylon next to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's going to be me. No, I don't take that much out of van, thank God. Um, I take like my baby out of van just to like, you know, take the edge off. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Fair enough. It's like a glass of wine without the hangover. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's hey, listen, whatever gets you there. <laughs> exactly. All right, Katie. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, I could, I could spend pleasure. hours, but I'm sure you've got a little humanoid to get back to and you've got to pack because you're getting the fuck out of here. Because we are. It's yeah. listen, we may be back. I may we may get to Oregon and I'll be like It's cold. <laughs> There's no sun. We're moving to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. My um, husband would never. He would never. He would never. Well, you never so, know. You never know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And oh, and where can how can our listeners and viewers find you? Find me. Um I am on all the social medias, mm-hmm. all of that. I'm not there as much as I should or used to be because mm-hmm. I'm too busy with my kid. Um, but uh, also the podcast, blah, 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 okay. with Katie Sackoff, mm-hmm. um, is we're on a tiny little hiatus right now. Um, but we'll be back in the next couple months with uh, all new guests. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Katie. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>